Hello everybody, Lawslay here. I am back with a video with an introduction about pseudo 3D, also known as fake 3D. I'll just have to say in the beginning of this recording of this video, recording this video drops the FPS a lot. It's now recording at 40 FPS and it used to be 16 before I started the recording. So just so you know that. I won't be talking about how to program things like this. So if you want to see the code, I will put a download link in the description to this project. I'll only be talking about the theory behind how to create systems for Pseudo 3D. So the first system we are going to be talking about is Pseudo 3D Isometric 3D. As you can see, we have a camera and that is top down viewed with an angle towards the world. And there's no perspective. We now have a player that can walk and jump, but we can also add stuff like freeze, freeze here and there. You can see you can stand behind and in front of trees, and you can also play some uh, tiles. And with tiles like these, you can create little platforming sections. But okay, to create a system like this, we start off with a grid. In that grid, you divide the y axis with 2. And after doing that, we create an example tile. And the example tile, it has an X and Y axis, but it also has a Z axis. So you raise the tile with the Z value, and then you connect it with the ground again. And this way we have got an isometric tile. The next system we are going to be talking about is top-down perspective. As you can see, the idea behind the system is you have the middle point of the screen and every object bends away on the screen depending on their Z value and their distance to the middle point of the screen. For many objects that go high up like the spaceships, it also looks nice to scale their sprite based on their height. So the higher they go, the bigger they are drawn. You can add some nice little effects to systems like these, like uh, Pseudo 3D Rain. And, well, it just looks great. So to create something like this, you have two points. One point is the middle point of the screen, the blue point. And the other point is the, the red point here. That's the location of the object you want to draw. So the location of the object, you only have the X and I axis now. But you also has a Z axis. So you create a vector with an X and Y position with a length and a direction from the middle point of the screen to the red dot, so the object position. Then you uh, well, move the vector to the object position. You multiply the vector with the Z value of the object. And as you can see, the vector most of the time goes out of the screen. So then you multiply it with a um, number of choice to reduce the effect. And then the vector ends on the screen. So if you want to see how this looks in action, it looks like this. As you can see, I also have drawn a shadow at the position, the X and Y position of the object. This way it's more clear at what position the object is placed on the world. A really cool and pretty recent uh, pseudo 3D system is sliced voxel models. It doesn't really have a name, but that kind of explains what it is. So you have a lot of sprites and those form layers of some kind of model. So if you've created the sprites and you stack them on top of each other, you can create models like these. And in this view, it's isometric 3D, but you can also use it for perspective, for example. And most of the time it's just used for isometric 3D. The last system I'm going to show you is first person 3D 3D. This one is really heavy and well combined with recording it only gives me an output of 30 fps but if everything goes right it will end up having um, 60 on your computer. You can also reduce the object count if it's still too heavy for you to display. So the nice thing about it is it's really believable especially if you are in cl close to ground level and you aren't forced to use only one field of view you can change it to any field of view you want like here i use a field of view of almost 360 degrees well 
it doesn't go really higher than this, so it isn't perfect 360 degrees, but it comes really close to it. The effect stays really believable until you go high up and you look down. You will see the stretching looks a bit strange. And I know why it is, but I can't really fix it if I still use this system. I really would like if I could explain how this works in words. But it's really hard to do and I've tried multiple times and it always ended up being cringy. So if you really want to know how to create a system like this, you will just have to look at the source code. It is actually not that hard to implement. It's more hard to explain than to create. But you can just have to give it a look yourself. That's it for this video for today. If you want to know how to program it yourself, then just download my project and give the source code a try. I would like to upload more videos soon, but that's based on how much school work I still have to do. So we will see about that. See you on the next video. Could this microphone just work already, please?